Okay, this is part 24 of Federalist number 10. We continue with the theme of representation, enlarged sphere, refined character. Remember, Madison was saying we need to enlarge the sphere, enlarge the area that we choose our representatives from. This way, we can find more qualified, wiser people that are not going to sacrifice the long-term interest of all the people of most of the state rather than to the short-term interest of a few. So you want people to think about everybody in the state or in the district they're from rather than just the town they're from. Okay, let me read some more. Men of factious tempers, of local prejudices, or of sinister designs, may by intrigue, by corruption, or by other means first obtain the suffrages and then betray the interests of the people. We talked about this in the last part. The question is, whether small or extensive republics are most favorable to the election of proper guardians of public weal and is clearly decided in favor of the latter by two obvious considerations. And he continues and he keeps on saying, uh, if you go with the small area, number one, you're not going to have as many qualified people and also small areas, people that will come and say we want to be elected are people with local interests. They only think of their town. They only think of their vicinity. Okay, before we go too far, let me read you a part of the Constitution. Okay, it's an Article 1. Notice uh, the first Congress of the United States, of all the 13 states, they only decided to have 65 members to the House of Representatives. Of all the states, they only sent 65 people. Okay? And, for example, it says... The number of representatives shall not exceed one for every 30,000. In other words, you're going to have to have at least 30,000 people for one representative. So they wanted to make sure there are not too many representatives so that, as Madison says, the people that get elected are wise people. Notice, they gave Rhode Island and Delaware only one representative to the House of Representatives, okay? They, had, they gave New Hampshire three. They gave New Jersey four. New Jersey's right here. They gave Maryland, I think they gave Maryland six. And they gave South Carolina and Georgia, no, South Carolina five and Georgia three. So, uh, like I said in the previous videos, even the House of Representatives, which is supposed to be the most democratic part of this government, only... But they try to, they try to even make sure that it's not way too democratic, okay? Again, just keep in mind that he keeps on saying, I want to refine the pool of the people that we're going to let in the office so that they have the long-term interest. And I already mentioned that the Senate, the President, the senators, the president, and even justices, judges, 
the federal judges, they're not elected directly. The only part that's elected directly, as far as this Congress goes, is the House of Re members of the House of Representatives. Even then, they don't allow too, member, too many members to be elected. This way, the area that the members come from is large, and hopefully, they'll be wiser and decide for what's best for the country, even if not their states. Now, the things have changed right now. So we are talking about 1787. So keep that in mind, okay? So constantly keep that in mind. And another thing you want to keep, keep in mind, this is one of the great things about this Constitution, I think. One of the most important things about this Constitution. Uh, remember back when he was, they were talking about factions and how sometimes these factions might gather around uh, things that are related to religions or sects, parts of religions and stuff like that. One of the best things about the Constitution is uh, part of the Article 6, which says there shall be no religious tests. In other words, they wanted to keep religion and religious tests out of at least at that time out of the federal government. Had that not been in the Constitution of the United States at that time, I don't think we would have had the same country. Because at that time, even Christians did not even trust other Christians. People forget that's why we have the First Amendment. The First Amendment is not there because Christians were worried about Hindus and Muslims and Jews coming, taking, you know, going into government. They did not trust other Christians of other sects. That's why the First Amendment is there, to make sure that uh, Episcopalians don't get ran over by uh, Presbyterians or vice versa or Baptists don't get run over and their rights violated by other groups of Christians. So that, <laughs> that's a very important thing to keep in mind. It's one of the things that most of the scholars don't talk about. They don't say that the First Amendment is there. They, they, they have a narrow view of it. They don't talk about the fact that First Amendment is there because Christians didn't trust other Christians. So keep that in mind because we constantly are talking about refinement, refinement in this paper. Okay, I'll read another paragraph. It must be confessed that in this and in most other cases, there is a mean on both sides of which inconveniences will be found to lie. By enlarging too much the number of electors, you render the representatives too little acquainted with all their local circumstances and lesser interests. And by reducing it too much, you render him unduly attached to these and too little fit to comprehend and pursue great and national objects. The federal constitution forms a happy combination in this respect. The great and aggregate interests being referred to the national, the local and particular to the state legislatures. So he says, we realize we are telling you that we have to have a large area to choose a representative from. This is to make sure that the person that goes to the House of Representatives or even Senate is familiar with the overall picture. But he says the beauty of this Constitution in its federal form is that the federal government, the national government, will only be concerned with things that have to do with the whole nation, with the larger area. 
whereas we are leaving the small the the matters that are relevant to the states to be done by state legislators okay we leave what is the area that we leave the legislation that needs the detail oriented view of the state legislators to them we only deal with the big issues so he's he's here it's actually telling the anti-federalists the people who were against this constitution because they said you can't make a republic in a large area they're saying no we actually are going to do the stuff that is important to the whole nation to the whole 13 states but we're going to leave a whole bunch of stuff for you states to decide on that's what this constitution that's what this federalism is for division of power federal government only deals with certain things that are enumerated in the Constitution that the Constitution says the federal government can do we're going to leave most of the stuff that states can make better decisions about to the states so this is very important that he says that because constantly wants to tell the people who criticize him that states will be very important states are in the picture don't think we don't need the state's ex expertise so he says this is a happy medium this is a good balance all right we'll continue in the next video